Hey everyone, Justin here. Today I'm talking about the five biggest mistakes that I made training for my first Ironman that you can apply to triathlons of any distance. Hey everyone, welcome back to the same place that I was at last weekend where I got my solo marathon in here on this trail. And I wanna to talk to you about some of the biggest mistakes that I've made training for my first Ironman. These are things that I've been thinking about for a while since Ironman Chattanooga, and I really wanted to nail them down. And more importantly than that, there are things that I think are gonna help you out so you can avoid them we're going to dive right in. The fifth biggest mistake that I made was not understanding training volume and how to be most efficient. So regardless of whatever training plan you're on, you're going to be given roughly a set of hours that you need to dedicate per week. Honestly, I would add something like maybe 25% to that realistically by the time you factor in all the additional time that goes into it. Once that 35 minute swim becomes an hour and a half after work, regardless of whatever distance you're training for, those base times of driving to the pool, changing, taking a shower, doing your swim, taking another shower, changing and getting back home. And secondly, you really need to find little ways to be more efficient. So I was doing a lot of laundry in the sink. I wasn't washing my clothes every single day. I had multiple sets of workout gear. Near the end of my Ironman training, I developed a really good system where I had all my gear laid out perfectly the night before. I had my little grab bag and I could just go and do the next day's workout. Fourth biggest mistake that I made was caring too much about gear. Here's the thing, a lot of beginner triathlon videos are all about the gear that you have to have, the gear that you need to buy, things that are gonna make you faster. In my opinion, a lot of it's kind of BS. You're gonna hear people say, like, well, you know, the slower you are, the more you actually benefit from those time gains on something like an aerodynamic wheel or something like that. And that's technically true. You know, a 2% gain is going to be more absolute time for somebody who spends six and a half hours on an Ironman bike versus five and a half hours. That's true. How much money are you willing to spend to get your Ironman bike from six hours and 30 minutes to six hours and 27 minutes? For me, it's not that much. Now, absolutely, there are some people who only make cutoffs by a couple of minutes. So the argument could be made that if they had bought that speed, maybe they would have continued on. But I think for the majority of people who are spending thousands and thousands of dollars on saving five minutes, I don't think it's worth it. I would like to spend my money on things that make me more comfortable, that make me more safe, a good nutrition system so I could drink comfortably on the bike, more comfortable cycling shoes, or things that actually make you faster, smart bike trainer or power pedals so you can actually improve your fitness and so that you're faster. Personally, I think a lot of triathletes are kind of gear obsessed. All right, third biggest mistake that I made was pushing every workout too hard. You don't need to go set absolute PRs on every single run. I made a lot of mistakes because I was trying to go out super hard and I was constantly exhausted. I was never recovering properly. Treating every workout like it's a race also increases your risk of injury. Undertrained is always going to be better than over injured. That's going to be much worse than only getting, say, 90% of a workout's potential compared to 100%. The other thing is there's a lot of research out there that says a lot of your long distance work should actually be done at a comfortably easy pace. You should be comfortable and you should be working, but you shouldn't be necessarily working hard. And then about 20% of your time should be dedicated to working really, really hard and actually doing some speed work and getting those harder efforts in. Second biggest mistake is a mistake that I still make to this day, and that is not enough strength work and not enough recovery time. I'll freely admit, I don't like doing strength work. I don't like doing supplemental exercises, but even if you can get 10 or 15 minutes in two or three times a week, you're gonna be better off. The next part of that is recovery and taking recovery really seriously. So whether that's yoga or a stretching routine, or for me, I found foam rolling to be incredibly, incredibly beneficial. That tightness then increases your risk of injury. I made a video about the strength routine that I did right there. Just doing some squats and lunges, as well as a little bit of foam rolling on your legs for the majority of people is gonna go a pretty long way. And in my opinion, it's definitely a good use of your time. And lastly, the number one mistake that I made that seriously impacted me for months was not taking nutrition seriously enough. There's a lot of different opinions on nutrition. When it came to Ironman specifically and that level of training volume, the number one thing that I did wrong during training was simply not eating 
enough. Here's how that came into play. So let's say I go on a 80 mile bike ride and burn say 3,500 calories on Saturday. I go home and I eat a little more and I drink my recovery shake and all of that. And I end up intaking maybe 1,500 or 2,000 calories. I'm still down about 1,200 calories. And then I attempt to go on a 20 mile run on Sunday and I intake another thousand or so calories doing that, I'm going to be ending up down multiple thousands of calories over the weekend. And absolutely fat stores are going to make up that difference in the short term. If you start expanding that out over a training plan of weeks or months, you're going to be under fueling perpetually and that's going to cause weaknesses and you're not going to get enough out of your actual workouts. That was a huge problem of mine. Secondly, was simply not taking nutritionally enough on the bike in training and on race day. I was generally pretty good about trying to train with fuel. In the beginning, I didn't like training with fuel because I almost didn't want to spend the money on like tailwind or energy gels in my training. But if you're going out a 80 mile bike ride, you need to get used to taking that nutrition so you know how your body responds to it and so that you stay strong on your bike ride or your run so that you're not just bonking and basically failing your workout. So that's it, the five biggest things that I did wrong training for my Ironman. I hope that they help you regardless of the distance of triathlon that you're going for. If you have any specific questions, absolutely feel free. And I hope you guys subscribe and come back. It's February now. I hope you're getting started on your training for this summer. Now's the best time. I'm lucky to live in North Carolina. It's not absolutely terrible. And I hope it's not terrible where you're at either. All right, I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.